Mysteries surround us. They are everywhere, and every day we come closer to brand new, breathtaking and extraordinary discoveries that shape the way we see the world and cosmos we inhabit. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three brilliant discoveries. Mysterious Lost City Discovered in the Cambodian Jungle The Cambodian jungle is a place of much intrigue, but the greatest discovery by far was that of the lost city of Mahendra Parvata. Archaeologists utilised laser technology combined with ground surveys to find the lost city placed within the Phnom Kulin Mountains. The researchers involved stated, despite knowing that the Phnom Kulin Mountains likely hid traces of a Khmer capital city, archaeologists have had difficulty accessing the region. The mountains are covered in dense vegetation, and they were one of the last strongholds of Khmer Rouge guerrillas until the 1990s. Landmines and unexploded ordnance continue to pose a threat to communities living and working in the mountains and complicate archaeological research. The LiDAR laser was used for this expedition, which provides researchers with information detailing the distance to the Earth's surface and reveals areas overgrown by nature. LiDAR is an incredibly useful tool, also used for a myriad of other applications, including in vehicles, as it is what allows modern cars to have 360-degree cameras. The lost city of Mahendra Pavata itself was established somewhere between the 8th and 9th century AD and was a part of the long-since-gone Khmer Empire. However, most archaeologists fervently believe that the city of Mahendra Pavata is older than the megacity Angkor, also of the Khmer Empire. LiDAR has shown that there is a hydraulic architectural design in Mahendra Pavata, although it was never completed. Researchers claimed this meant that the water management system was not sufficient to support irrigated rice agriculture, which may suggest the city did not last long as a Khmer power centre, even though the reservoir at Mahendra Pavata was not functional and may have inspired the vast artificial lakes that would become a defining feature of Angkor. Aside from the lost city itself, researchers went to check out the mound fields surrounding the site. It is an area composed of 366 mounds, all in strange geometric patterns of 15 groups. At the site, archaeologists discovered ceramics and building remnants from the 10th century AD. Although the purpose of the mounds remains unknown, it is likely that, whatever they were, the mounds were built later than the majority of Mahendra Pavata. In a different yet related project to the finding of Mahendra Pavata, scientists found more information that explains why the city of Angkor fell. The study argued that instead of a catastrophic event, as many people tend to assume, the city fell gradually through the course of a certain period of time. The city of Angkor was once the powerhouse of the jungle Khmer Empire, which at one point was believed to house one million people. The fall of Angkor could be related to the fall of Mahendra Pavata and all neighbouring cities of the empire. Some researchers believe that Angkor fell due to surrounding states invading or attacking the empire's assets around 1431, and this is currently the leading theory. A chunk of satellite almost hit the International Space Station. Earlier this month, the ISS had no choice but to skillfully shift itself out of the path of collision with a remnant of a satellite among other space trash. The crew residing aboard the International Space Station increased the urgency of the situation and meant that the ISS had to abruptly change orbit on the 11th of November to ensure the safety of its temporary crew. The station has been running for 23 years, and within those two decades, it has had around 30 near collisions with various trash and debris floating around space that needed the station to shift its orbit or urgently move in some way. Three such almost collisions happened last year in 2020, but in May 2021, the station suffered a genuine hit to its arm. The damage caused by a tiny piece of cosmic rubble caused a 5mm hole to appear in the station. The Fengyang 1C satellite, created for weather monitoring purposes, was shattered by a missile test, creating over 3,500 pieces of dangerous space junk that now flows through the cosmos. 
Unfortunately for the International Space Station, many of the Fengyun 1C's fragments have made their way close to it over the years. A Russian Progress supply spacecraft that was fortunately docked in the ISS at the time was able to fire rockets and blast the station away from the course of collision with Fengyang 1C merely six minutes before it would have been hit. The rockets pushed the ISS out of the way and increased its speed by 0.7 meters per second. This, in turn, raised the station's orbit by 1.2 kilometers. The ISS's orbit is about 400 kilometers high. Astronauts and cosmonauts worry for the future of space travel because of the growing issues surrounding space debris. The debris threatens all working satellites and space stations positioned in our low orbit and, such as on November 11th, can severely endanger astronauts' lives. The International Space Station is particularly endangered, however, as it is the largest space station currently in space and orbits at a fast speed of 7.66 km per second. Its fast pace, combined with large pieces of debris floating through space, could form a collision that could cause irreversible damage to the space station. Not to mention the risk it would entail for any crew members on board. As more satellites are put out into the Earth's orbit, the more obstacles there are to look out for. As of today, there are nearly 5,000 satellites in use in our orbit. SpaceX claims it wants to reach a goal of sending 12,000 satellites into space, currently having 2,000 out in orbit. The company also states they'd like to put 40,000 satellites into orbit at some point in the future. It's estimated there are 330 million space junk objects between 1 mm and 1 cm large and yet another million between 1 cm and 10 cm. At high speeds, such as the ISS's, even the smallest hit from a tiny debris object can cause harm to the station, likewise with all other working satellites. It is impossible to keep track of all the space junk and currently impossible for us to get rid of it. Still, as the problem increases, scientists are working to find a way to remove larger pieces from orbit. Mysterious kick just after the Big Bang may have created dark matter. Scientists believe that matter and antimatter should be balanced. They are counterparts, and as most materials that are opposites, they ought to cancel each other out on contact. All the universe's matter should have been destroyed as soon as it came into existence as a result of touching with antimatter. But, as we know, that's not the case, and there is a known imbalance in space when it comes to matter and antimatter. Scientists now theorize that when the universe was in its infancy, a kick was responsible for producing far more matter than antimatter. It's possible that this imbalance between them made dark matter. Dark matter has a pull on everything, yet it does not interact with anything, even light. All we know is it exists and makes up 80% of our cosmos. But how it works, how it came to be, and what it does is still a mystery. And yet, we also know that regular matter has nothing in common with dark matter, which is, as of now, outside our understanding of physics. It is believed that for a short while, antimatter and matter were balanced, but something caused that balance to shift and it filled the universe with matter. Scientists do not know when this happened, if it even did. It is now thought that perhaps the unbalance of matter and antimatter is connected to the birth of dark matter. It would make sense for these processes to be connected, but without proof, one can only speculate and study the situation. A study by Arxiv from 2020 alleges that space relies on a baryon number symmetry. Baryons are composed of quarks, protons and neutrons, and it claims that all baryons must be equal in interaction with baryons possessing antiquarks. If this paper is accepted by peers, it will suggest that symmetry is an aspect of almost all things in space, yet it suggests that in the early cosmos, the kick specifically pushed antimatter and matter out of proportion. In physics, if symmetry is shattered, it creates what is called a goldstone boson. So if the theory is correct, it adds evidence to the idea that dark matter is a product of the baryon number of matters breaking. The balance between dark matter and matter then suggests they are indeed related. 
but this theorized model of understanding dark matter does not help with the split between dark and normal matter. 80% dark matter and 20% matter. They are in rough balance. And it's thought that it's because they share their origins. This unknown origin or kick is yet to be theorized and for now is being held as a placeholder. But what do you make of these three mysteries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.